Good evening, San Diego. I'm Logan Burns. And I'm Ray for Weigel. Hunter Sowards has the night off. Thank you for joining us. So earlier this week, the transgender woman at the center of the Santee YMCA controversy went before the city council. Kristen Wood, she's come forward as the transgender woman who was in the locker room when a 17-year-old girl walked in. That 17-year-old girl who I interviewed said she felt scared when she heard a, quote, deep voice thinking it belonged to a man. Well, Wood took the podium on Wednesday night in front of a crowd of supporters and protesters to share her story. I'm a mom, a grandmom, and as my beloved granddaughter says, my nana. Now please look at me. Listen to the sound of my voice. I am a threat to no one. In the year I've been a member of the Y, children have attended summer camp and have been with their parents and grandparents in the women's locker room with me, and there has never, ever been an incident, ever. Not until one was manufactured using this forum to do so. So tensions were very high after the meeting. There was a clash between both liberal and conservative activists, and both came away saying that no solution was met. So it is continuing to be discussed. We are now joined with Santee Mayor John Minto. He's spoken about the experience. He's saying he wants to make everybody feel safe and included and valued. He's joining us now to talk more about the reaction and what can be done uh, moving forward. First of all, thank you, sir, for coming out here and talking with us. Uh, this welcome. is a story that a lot of people have been talking about. There's a yes. lot of stories, a lot of angles, and, and you want to set the record straight, if you will. That's true. Thanks, Ray, for, for uh, talking with me about this. As we mentioned, um, you know, during the break, it's important for us to get out here and let people know what's really happening, not listening to what's going on through the grapevine that might be true, may not be true, some half-truths. And so this was very important to us when it was brought forward. And so myself and my vice mayor, Laura Koval, we jumped on it right away. And I needed her to help me because I was out of town for all this. Oh, wow. And so we stayed in close contact, of course, on the phone. She made it to a um, rally that took place and spoke. And we've listened to a lot of folks. And what's most important for us and what happened at that meeting is we allowed people to be heard. Right. Whether you you're agree or disagree, doesn't matter what side you're on, your voice is valuable and it's important for us to hear it. We've gone to the YMCA, we've met with their CEO and the people that do building renovation and whatnot, and they've already come up with a plan to make sure that people who want to be separated can be separated. People who want to be together can be together. So the whole idea is that nobody is excluded, that everybody's included in what's going on, and people have a choice. And that's what's very important. But like you said at the opening here, the most important thing is that people are safe and people are valued. Now, the Santee YMCA did follow the letter of the law, so does anything need to change? And I've talked to a lot of people who say, oh, they need to change their policy. Um, if they're following the law, what, what else should they be doing? Well, there's a letter of the law and spirit of the law. Mm. And people are actually asking for them to follow the spirit of the law mm. because, you know, they could just turn a blind eye and say, no, we're doing everything we're supposed to. Right. But does that really, you know, address the concerns of the public? No, it does not. So they uh, have put together some preliminary drawings and uh, actually what's really good about it is they had that rally right. and they had an architect that came forward that lives in Santee and said, listen, I'll help you with drawings for free. So what a great opportunity for actually people to come together, to work together. And so that's what's happening now. And uh, what I understand is that we can expect sometime in the near future for them to start doing a collection for funds. Obviously, it takes money to do this. And right. they're, you know, they're a nonprofit. So they right. need all the help they can get. But they're going to take us, uh, you know, affirmative uh, steps to make sure, like I say, everybody is safe. So and, and when you, I want to get a little more into the weeds on that then. So there, there's, th there's thoughts that they might actually make separate locker rooms, one for transgender, one for women, one for biological men, or, or I mean, what's the solution to make everybody happy, or is there one? Well, the, the whole idea is that th there's really no need to have three different kinds of locker rooms. You still have the men's room, right. the women's locker room, but what you do is you reconfigure the way it's done, and you can make uh, separate, um, 
you know, cubicles for people to go in and shower and change, put their belongings in a cubicle while they're there. And but when they're coming back and forth, they just take their duffel bag and put it in a locker right. so that everybody else has access. Uh, but the idea is that if you want to go into this separate shower area, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that says you have to do that. Uh, except that there probably won't be any uh, open showers any longer. Right. And I commend them for doing that. And uh, I commend uh, my uh, vice mayor, Laura, because uh, she has a lot of experience. She's in Park and Rec. She um, uh, was a, an assistant director at the Boys and Girls Club right. uh, early on in her career. So she understands a lot of these issues, and she's able to give a lot of good um, ideas and feedback to everybody involved. Now, I did watch the city council meeting, and you're right. Everybody's voice was heard, but nobody seemed to be coming together. Do you feel that talking about with this architect and creating some different layouts, do you feel that that will satisfy because nobody's happy on both sides of the aisle when it comes to this story. Well, the unfortunate thing is you can't satisfy everybody. Right. And as long as we follow the law and don't exclude people and we make it safe for the people that uh, are there, that's really what we can do. We can't create some ordinance. People call for us to create a law that right. separates everybody. But we can't do anything that supersedes state law, for instance. Right. So we have to work within the boundaries that we're given. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, I've talked to a lot of the people involved, all good people. And it's just people are very passionate about their feelings yeah. and their ideologies. So, and we want them to also feel valued that they got something out of it also, even if they weren't on what somebody might call the winning side. Right. Well, John Minto, Mayor of Santee, really appreciate you coming on here and discussing this story and uh, w wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Great. sir. Great. Thank you. All right. Logan, let's send it over to you.